Hi there, I'm Colin. I used to eat out at restaurants a lot. Now, like most people, I'm stuck at home cooking all the time. I think I'm getting better at it. I am terrible at this, but I've still got a lot to learn. Each episode, I'll pick a dish I've never made before and do my best to create something edible. Is this a cooking show? I'll leave it up to you to decide. Welcome to the new gourmet. Hey sports fans, are you stuck at home? Day of the Super Bowl, all the stores are closed and or you're stuck in a snowstorm because you live in Philadelphia and you need something to dip your chips in? Well, good news. You can make salsa, allegedly, in five minutes. Um, I will be making a couple of slight modifications. One is that rather than cilantro, I'll be using parsley. Because we are a 50% non-cilantro tasting household, and parsley is just fine as a substitute for cilantro. First off, we have one and a quarter pounds of ripe Roma tomatoes. Um, food scale underneath, you can't really see it. It's sort of obscured from view here, but food scales are super useful. Definitely get a food scale. So I believe I'm going, it doesn't tell me how to chop the tomatoes. So that's not, we're not off to a good start. But I assume I will just chop them into Let's call it quarters. We've already run out of room in the blender. So, you know, I think it'll be okay. And we're, we're getting close to overflowing already. Okay, uh, two green onions. Ends trimmed, chopped into thirds. So now we'll get the those bits off, uh, I doesn't say not to use the whites. Sometimes, oh shit, man down. We could save it, we could save it. Just kill the outer layer off. Uh, now we are doing the third of a cup of chopped red onion. Oh, I forgot my, yes. Because it's a third of an onion and not a whole onion, therefore I can't leave the, fuzzy end on to prevent myself from tearing up. I don't actually need it because I'm only going to chop this into a few pieces, but I received these as a gift. No crying, no tears, perfect. That goes in. Now we've got one jalapeno pepper, seeded, and roughly chopped. There's probably a much better way to do this. I'm trying not to slice my fingers open in the process. Fuck. Now we've got one third cup of our quasi cilantro or cilantro substitute, AKA Italian parsley. Trick, fun trick to, I don't like to put the stems in, they are bitter, more bitter than the leaves. So I take a fork and there we go. And just pull the ends off, pull the leaves off with the fork, dump the stems. And then for the individual ones, you can just kind of use it as a way to get those off of there. So we're just gonna mush that down. Oh boy. Okay, that's up, up to the, we're up to the brim, but luckily we're pretty much out of things to put in there. So now we got some lime juice from half a lime, two tablespoons, give or take. Oh, that went everywhere. Fantastic. I'm so bad at this thing. I don't know why I'm the one person on the planet that can't use a lime press, lime juicer, but that's me. Got a quarter tablespoon of ground cumin, but first, because I picked up the other thing, we're gonna do a half a, taste, a teaspoon of chili powder. I'm not gonna use granulated sugar, because it's optional, and I don't think this needs to be a sweet salsa. And it says salt and pepper to taste, so, you know, throw some salt in there, probably needs a fair amount since it's got the sweet tomatoes and pepper. And I'm holding on to the garlic that I would normally put in there because uh, we also have a garlic sensitive household. Uh, yeah, it's been nine minutes, so I'm way behind, way behind. It took way longer than five minutes. Move the blender over here. All right. Let's get the cutting board out of the way. Oh, fun tip, you'll see that I have a damp paper towel underneath the cutting board because this house, again, not our house, 
has granite countertops, which are super annoying to have a cutting, have a cutting board on because it slides all over the place. Fun fact, you can take a damp paper towel, not wet, just damp, put it underneath the cutting board, helps prevent it from sliding all over the place. All right, this is very full, so this may not work. But we're going to try to pulse. Okay. So we're going to shove. I think my tomatoes needed to be smaller. Something tells me this may be a complete failure. You'll love to see it. Oh, starting to go. We're making progress. This looks nothing like salsa. This looks like fucking soup. So we've made some, uh, what is that chilled tomato soup? Gazpacho. We've made some gazpacho. I may not have had this on properly. It's kind of loose. I mean, looks like salsa. I think we're good. So we're going to take this off and hope, okay, yep, didn't go everywhere. Let's go for it. Hey, look at that. So, oh shit. Yeah, I got this thing stuck again. So don't use a rubber spatula on the bottom of a blender with sharp blades because you will do what I just did and get it stuck so you can't get it out until you take it apart. There's this like, I don't know what that is exactly, um, but we're going to chill it for a few hours, which is what the recipe recommends. And then we'll come back and taste it in front of you. It still looks kind of the same. I'm gonna double dip. That's okay, right? It's appropriate. We can double dip. We're all safe here. This tastes like what they bring out before you eat it, chilies. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the mild salsa at a CC's or another chain establishment. Chichis, now it's fresh. Chilies, one of them. There you go. I mean, it's fresh. It's fresh, it's, and it's not bad or... Uh... Slightly better. It's a step above jarred salsa, but that's about it. You know, it's still watery. I think putting that can of diced tomatoes in without draining it or anything was probably not wise and also just made it kind of soupy. I wouldn't make it again. I wouldn't recommend that you make it again. 